Yo, 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 our space. Today, we've got a story, just one story, but it's a doozy. But a guy who discovers his wife of nine years cheated on him. Let's see how it goes. Although I think we probably already know. Oh, let's find out anyway. My, male 46, wife, female 46, of nine years cheated on me. I found the evidence tonight. My mind is a mess. All this just happened within the last few hours. This will probably be a lot of babbling, but please bear with me. I'm not sure I really am asking for advice, but I need to get all my thoughts and frustrations out. I'm not writing from a throwaway, because frankly, my dear, I don't give a dang. She doesn't use Reddit, and I don't know my username. I should probably clarify that my username is meant as a choke. So, where to begin? Let's rewind a year or so. Boy, forks a lot. A hard, physical job that really wears her down. It's tough on her, and I have mentioned to her so many times that she needs another job. She needs to get away from her current work situation, even if that means going unemployed for a while. Here in Denmark, we can do that for several years, and get a pay that would almost match what she made, so there is not real danger. She has refused every single time. No matter how much I have asked and begged her to take care of herself, the answer is always no. Me? I've been unemployed that year, along with being on sick leave with stress, anxiety, and depression. Long story. Fortunately, things are better, and I am seeing my way out of it. I have tried to help as much as I could here at home, but it has honestly been hard. I've had a lot of days where I haven't been able to do much because of the depression. Again, it's a work in progress and it's going the right way. In June or July, she tells me that there is a new co-worker. He's 27 or something like that and married. He's a nice guy and she doesn't mind working with him. They change staff like other people change socks, so this is nothing new. However, she keeps talking about him. I tease her about it because I trust her. We've been married for nine years, so why shouldn't I? Like, Things do start to be a little much. He's a foreigner, and she starts reading a lot about his culture. She also starts working Saturdays on occasion, something she's never done before. She does this when they are on delivery, which is a nice long drive, all day. Just the two of them. We're now getting to around September. She has a vacation scheduled. She's gonna meet some family. I'm not going. Up until it's vacation, she takes three out of four Saturdays to go deliver with her coworker, me. I get one measly weekend with her. Every night, when she comes home, she's tired, exhausted. Home, eat, fall asleep on the sofa. No variation, no sex. She tells me that her coworker wants to spend extra time with her since she is going to be away for two whole weeks. I kind of think, what the F? But let it go. Again, I trust her with my life. So she goes on vacation. She's with the family and getting very depressed. I'm pretty sure she's had a depression for ages, but she has always refused any kind of help. Trust me, I have had so many conversations about it with her, it's almost silly. While she's gone, I start thinking a lot about things. That'll sign show up and tells me something is wrong. She has always hated when people smoke around her, refuse to visit smokers because her hair would smell. Well, she started smoking. Not a lot, but at least a few times daily. She also started drinking. Not a lot, but enough to knock her out at night. She gets drunk for one beer, literally. She'd never been a drinker, something I liked about her. Before she left on vacation, I emptied her tablet and installed Netflix on it, nothing else. When I did that, I happened to see her app download history. Pick locker, video locker, WhatsApp, WhatsApp locker, stuff like that. Apps we never have used, that's for sure. I start putting things together. I do, however, push it aside. Maybe it's just ignorance. Maybe I'm just seeing ghosts. Again, I trust her. Then, she posts on Facebook that she got a new tattoo. I never heard about it. She didn't even mention it when she called me. This is, of course, a permanent thing, and I would have thought she'd mention it to me. But no, it was apparently a spur-of-the-moment thing. The tattoo is a Persian word, life. Sure, it's a nice little tat. However, her co-worker is Persian. The only person that we know who is Persian. And, as I'm digging around online, I learned that it is also a term of endearment like honey or love. I explode. I call her. I tell her that this is utter bullcrap and I know what is going on. She apologizes, tell me that it is really is just a word life for her. But she can see how it looks now that I put it in the spotlight. There is nothing else I need to worry about, supposedly. I ask her for the time she will arrive at the airport. I'm told it's not needed. 
she will be picked up by her co-worker. When she comes home, she has her baggage and a bouquet of red roses. Since then, I have been utter paranoid. She changed the code on her phone, and her phone never leaves her side. Before all this, it would always be somewhere charging, or she'd just forget it in the kitchen or something. Now it is glued to her hand, and she's chatting a lot. It's been impossible to get to see what she is doing on her phone, but obviously, something is going on. Since she came home from vacation, she just can't stop talking about the guy. It bothers me. I tell her, she gets mad, because he is just a friend. Don't be so dang paranoid. It's supposedly gross that I could even think of her being with a baby like him. She has basically adopted him, because she misses your sons a lot. Another story for another time, maybe. I kinda buy it, but I don't. So, I try my best to read her lock code as good as I can, and Monday, I finally cracked it. She went to pee without her phone, and I tested it. It was correct. I didn't have time to do any more. She goes to work, and I can't stop thinking. Yesterday, like always, the phone is glued to her. Then today, she is home early from work. That is also a day that, depression-wise, has been super bad for me. I have more or less slept all day, not being able to wake up. I go pick her up at the station when she comes home. We go shop a bit and go home. I'm dead tired, so I tell her I'm going to go to bed. She wants to watch TV, so we just split there. In the bedroom, I see her phone charging. Now is my chance. I unlock, open messenger, and see it. My heart sag and shatter on the floor. Lots of cuddly words, way more I love yous than she ever says to me. A comment to him that they can't kiss at work in case someone catches them. Then, she comes in. Clearly, she realized that I was alone with her phone. Cause she looked desperate. She didn't ask what I was doing with her phone. She asked why I was reading her messages. I told her that I was reading because I felt that I needed to. That she was hiding stuff. And that I was obviously right. She said nothing. I just exploded. I called her out. I told her it was over. I asked her if she had screwed him. She said yes. I told her to pack her stuff and leave. Everything seems to be packed now. It's 2 a.m. here. And from what I can hear, on the many text messages he received, she's arranged for a friend to pick her up. I don't know this for sure, but I believe they're the only ones that she uses SMS with. I'm considering sending them a text, letting them know my side of the story of what happened. I'm pretty sure she's lying it out as she's the victim when she tells them. So here I sit, unable to sleep, thinking if I did the right thing. I know I did. I can't live with a cheater. I can't ever look into the eyes of a wife that has consistently lied to my face for months. I can't cope with her branding herself in this horror while she was married to me. Not a chance. Of course, the doubt keeps crawling up on me. Did I really read that? I know my memory is bad because of the depression. All those thoughts that I know a lot of you guys can relate to. But deep down, I feel relief. I feel that I no longer am seeing ghosts everywhere. I don't want to say good riddance, but good riddance. Obviously, I haven't processed all this at all just yet. I'm sure I'm gonna feel devastated at some point. Right now, I'm kind of laughing to myself. How could I be this stupid and naive? I have genuinely tried to fix things. I have tried to ask her what she wants. Tried to get her to communicate with me. Tried telling her that I wanted our sex life back. To this, she answered that she just doesn't want sex these days. Yeah, I see that. I constantly switch between thinking, F her, and just F off and go rot when whatever misery you will find, and, am I doing the right thing here? I know it will end up with option number one, but it is so hard to clear my mind of everything going on. Anyway, thank you for reading. Some comforting words would feel nice. So advice on dating when you're 46 would be nice. Anything else would also be nice. Too long didn't read. Wife cheated on me and I finally found out tonight and kicked her out. Edits. Minor changes for clarity. An F ton of misspells. I keep thinking of things I should add to the story. More evidence, more little details, but I think there's enough to read already. Update. I love to thing out my original story, but I feel that it kind of comes into play. Ex-wife comes from the U.S., move here with her daughter, who is now all grown up and lives with us, well, me. She was obviously shocked when she came out last night hearing all the commotion and had to hear her mom tell her that she was having an affair and that she's moving out. There has been a fallout between the two when I needed to have a talk with ex-wife after she came home from her vacation, and this never really mended. So... When ex-wife left, she left her daughter behind, like, literally, didn't even tell her goodbye. I was informed that she spent the night talking to relatives in the U.S. and that they will gather money so she can come home, in the naive hope that the grass is greener on the other side. 
Good luck with that. When I asked about her daughter, all I got was, she probably wants to stay with you. When she woke up this morning, her mom was gone. For good. I had to sit down with her and have a talk about the future. I have told her that I will always consider her my daughter, as I know she considers me her father. She will be more than welcome to live with me, either in this apartment or a smaller one, or move on her own if that is her preference. Regardless, she will have a parent in me, no matter what. I can't believe she left her freaking daughter behind. So, she will not stay with her boy toy. She will move back home. I welcome it. It is now 11 a.m. She left about four hours ago. Her friend asked me if I could please help them getting all her suitcases down the stairs. Sadly, I was busy being comfortable in my chair. Oh well. Before she left, I made sure that she had everything she wanted, and I made her drop her keys. She's gone. Forever. Good riddance. Once I could tell that they were done with the hard labor, I put on my coat and left for the gym. I spent a couple of hours there, lifting heavy stuff, having a good talk with the owner of the gym, who was a solid personal friend, and it cleared my mind even more than it already was. For once, I feel that I see things clear. I don't think I'm going to start ruining Boy Toy's marriage. He'll F that up on his own later on, and it will be a blast to watch. He won't need me. So now I'm sitting in a quiet apartment. The cat is sleeping in my lap. Daughter is in her room. She stayed home from work for obvious reasons. I have announced to friends and family on Facebook that we are no longer an item, and I get lots of support. It wasn't a crude or mean message, but simply stating the cold facts and the reasons. Soon, it's lunchtime. I feel surprisingly good. I feel clear-headed. This is good. To top it all, I see progress in the little weight loss journey I am doing. I gained quite a bit of weight from the depression, and I am super focused on losing it. Today is the first time that I saw my face and thought, whoa, things are happening. This is going to be a good day. This is going to be a good year. I will update later again when I feel like something needs to be added. To all those who have upvoted and or commented, I cannot thank you guys and not for helping me to this. Thank you so much for clearing my mind. I ought to buy you all gold, but I have a feeling the finances are going to be a little tight. Update 2 So, I have given things little thought, especially regarding whether I should let Boy Toy's wife and mom know. I have two options. I can go in person and risk that he has a day off or something, or... I can simply send a letter where I tell her. I don't want to go break someone's heart, but I do think she deserves to know. The trouble is, if I read her a letter, I'm honestly not sure if she can read it. Her being from Afghanistan, I think I wrote Persian somewhere, or did I just mention that the writing is a Persian? May cause a problem. The same goes for her mom. I know his wife does speak a little English. I would probably have to clarify very clearly on the envelope that it is for her, or maybe simply send an open postcard, which would be hilarious in its own right. Hmm. Update 3. The most amazing thing just happened. Like I mentioned earlier, I wrote on her Facebook what had happened. I want my friends and family to know and understand my situation. Well, ex-wife's mom just shared my story. Basically, she told all her friends that her daughter is a cheater. I'm not the one to correct her. Hey, OP, you did the right thing and I'm happy for you. There is no need to doubt yourself because you uncover the truth yourself and it's irrefutable. I know everything sucks right now and tomorrow is probably going to suck even harder, but next week it will suck a little less and next month it will suck even less than it sucked the week before. It will take time, but eventually everything will stop sucking and you'll be able to smile again and enjoy life. Until then, get help with the depression and anxiety and get some legal advice and get yourself a good night's rest. Everything sucks even more when you're tired. Take the time to heal and work on yourself. The truth is, you're better off alone than with a lying cheat.